Well, hey guys, this is going to be maybe a different form of update than you've had before. Every month or two, you know, whatever, during this COVID thing, I've tried to give an update on, you know, what's going to be changing and what's going to be different at Grace and Truth and so on. Um, I think we've pretty well figured out how to hit the tops of the waves as things keep changing and just keep plugging forward. So I don't really have a whole lot to share with you as far as changes that are going to be made. This update, though, is going to be maybe a different shape than the ones in the past because I'm leaving for Africa on Friday and, um, you know, just doing a little bit of oversight and, and you know, keeping my finger on the pulse of how things are going in the church. This is what pastors do. Like, I realize, you know, most people don't have to do this. You got jobs, you got, you know, your stay-at-home mom, you got a million things you're juggling and thinking about the general overall health of the of the local body of Christ is not the first thing on your mind. That's fine. You've got pastors for that kind of thing. So, you know, for me, for us, it's like if, if, if I'm awake, there's a decent chance that I'm thinking about you guys in some form or thinking about this body of believers in, in some way. And sometimes when I'm asleep, by the way, uh, you ever do that thing where like you have an idea as you know in one of your dreams or like you solve some kind of quandary or problem while you're asleep and you wake up you're like you know <laughs> eureka yeah that, that happens to me all the time so um i'm thinking about you guys all the time because i love you guys and so i just wanted to share with you before i uh fly out here that i am so so happy with so much of what i'm seeing around here as far as the health of the body of christ um you know i and the the main uh, expression of that, I think, is just the unity that we're seeing. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at Philippians 2 right now. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. And I got to tell you guys, uh, we're seeing it. And this has been one of the most potentially divisive calendar years, I think that would be possible. There's been so much stuff to disagree about, and there have been some good disagreements within this church. You know, how do we handle uh, COVID? What, are, what do we do about this procedure and that policy? And how do we respond to this this directive? And is that a law or is it not a law? And, you know, how do we go about all of that? And then on top of that, it's an election year, and you got people from various different backgrounds and political positions that could have just absolutely devoured each other. And I just haven't seen it. Disagreements have been handled in a, in a brotherly and a productive way, uh, and it's been more in the form of idea sharing. And like I just had somebody in here uh, the other day saying, hey, listen, here's what we're doing. Here's what I wish we would do. Can you please consider this? And so we just kind of sat and kicked it around and came up with some ideas and a good solution. And you know that person was seeing some stuff that we had not seen yet as pastors. So that was a helpful perspective. There was disagreement, and it was a good one. <laughs> it was exactly what was supposed to happen, and uh, it was it was a loving, brotherly conversation. So you know, I'm just seeing a lot of that stuff, and I just wanted to say, good job. You know, kudos. The, I don't know exactly how the Holy Spirit goes about creating unity in a church. I don't know all the nuts and bolts of that, but I know that He does require submissive hearts and willing participants in order to do that. If um, you know, there is such a way to quench the Spirit, right? There is such a thing as stiff arming God, even though He is He is sovereign and He will get done what He wants. A lot of times, based on our actions, our heart conditions, or whatever, He'll just hang back and say, "Hey, call me when you're ready. Like when I'm welcome there." With my spirit of unity and my, my spirit of the bond of, of the sealing of regenerate believers and all of that. When you want some of that, you let me know. Until then, I'm out. And he just, I mean, the scariest thing in the world, guys, is a church that the Holy Spirit refuses to enter, so to speak. I mean, this is metaphorical language, right? But you see these huge churches sometimes, and there's all this cool stuff in there, and God's not. And it's like, man, what a tragedy. And so, you know, when I look around here at, at how how the, the divisive political landscape has been handled among the body of believers. Beautiful, beautiful. And it's not all unanimous either. There's not unanimity, but there's unity. It's perfect. You know, there's diversity, but there's unity. It, 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 wonderful. I shouldn't use the word perfect, right? Nobody's perfect. I'm sure that somebody out there is, you know, working through something that they haven't totally mastered yet, and there's not perfect unity, and I don't know it. Okay, fine. Allowing for humanity to exist, um... You know, I'm, I just couldn't be happier with, uh, with you know, who you guys are and how you guys are doing. So anyway, as, as a part of the body, and honestly, I got to say this, this might sound weird. Um, I'm probably the most likely one to cause division in the church because I talk in public more than anybody else here. You know, I'm usually the guy with the microphone on. 
and you know just wider spread communication and um you know i'm I'm not exactly running low on opinions on stuff, and sometimes that can eclipse biblical exegesis if I'm not careful, and uh, you know I don't always do that right. So um, you know I'm I'm in a position where I got to be really really careful, uh, and I don't always like I said I don't always make the right decisions, but I recognize what it looks like when people are being really careful to protect the unity of a church because I got to spend a lot of my time doing that just so I don't screw it up, and so I see it. And uh, I love it. So good job, guys. You're better at this than I am, I think. And love covers a multitude of sins. And the love that you guys have for each other is covering a lot of the deficiencies of me that I'm probably not even aware of that I'm bringing to the table. And we get to, you know, I, I feel like I'm the, the most privileged pastor in the world because I get to lead a church in unity, you know, with the other pastors here. I'm kind of speaking for all of us. We get to lead a church in unity through difficult and potentially divisive times even though we don't have all the answers as to how to create unity. God's just doing it, and he's doing it through you. So I realize that's kind of a long and rambling pat on the back, um, but you know what? I'm going away to Africa, and you're not going to hear from me for a while. So that's uh, you know that's what you get. You, you put in your time now, and uh, I'll make up for it with a, a silence while I'm off the grid. So all right, guys. Hey, I love you guys, and uh, we'll, we'll see you when I get back. 